Okay, well, 90% of the, uh, the world uses the meter, and of course we think that came from the, the French during the Enlightenment, Napoleon's savants who, uh, who invented the meter, but it's not so. It's not so. So numbers play a very important place in our universe. These are the handwritten scribbled notes here of Sir Isaac Newton, and he's calculating the, uh, the sacred cubit. Pythagoras said that numbers the cause of gods and demons. Kepler said, where there's matter, there's geometry. And Plato said, numbers are the highest degree of knowledge. It is knowledge itself. Well, it's interesting that one of the names of God written in the margin of the King James Bible in Daniel 8.13 is Palmoni. God speaking to Daniel, and the name is Palmoni. And the Palmoni means the wonderful numberer or the numberer of secrets. So God himself is the ultimate wonderful numberer, and really the science of mathematics is his. But besides, you know, Kepler and Euclid, other great mathematicians. Uh, the original author, the, the father of metrology, is Toth, is Enoch, the seventh from Adam. So uh, Sacred Geometry Decoded is one of the uh, YouTube channels I like to follow. And so uh, in a recent episode, uh, I asked the author, I said, when you say it can't be dismissed as coincidence, a coincidence is when two things you know, come together, I said, what two things are you talking about? I'm asking because I'm sometimes slow of understanding and I want to understand. So I was asking, he talked at the end of this, uh, this video about coincidence. And, and so he wrote back and he said, because the default position, meaning of uh, you know, secular experts, Egyptologists or whatever, the, 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 the default position is ancient cultures were not in contact or they shared no common ancestor. And also that pi or phi wasn't known to the pyramid builders. These things are dismissed as coincidence, the rare occasions which they're addressed. So he says, usually experts don't even consider the tremendous unanimity uh, of uh, measurements in these ancient, ancient measures. Uh, but when they do, he says, they'll say any measure or math links are a coincidence and shouldn't be discuss discussed, end of discussion. So he was saying there's just too many coincidences between all these ancient systems of measures and all these ancient monuments, which he studies in, in that episode there. So, of course, we think that the, uh, uh, the origin of the meter goes back to Delambre and the, the French uh, uh, academics. Uh, in 1792, Delambre and uh, Machin, Two renowned astronomers were sent from Paris in opposite directions. Uh, this is because the French Academy of Science had approved the idea to make the meter be the one-tenth million part of the quadrant from the pole through Paris uh, to the equator, that quadrant. And so when you study the episode of these two guys in measurements, so many errors, they were imprisoned uh, using different measurements, different problems. And so... Here, Delambre admits that he had to choose between two of the books he got from his partner because he had two separate set of books, sort of like Columbus did when he, you know, he had, he, he had one set of measurements from his, from his crew and used another, so uh, uh, McCain did that. So uh, here, Delambre says, uh, he wrote in the margin that uh, he had to decide which one of the versions of his partner to use but then he said, uh, because after all, though, does it, re does it matter if it's wrong? Can the meter be wrong? He was saying, we're the ones setting up the first definition of it. It's our measurements that are being taken from the pole to the equator through Paris. And so if we're a little bit wrong, so what? It'll be, and, and he was right. What, he, what they measured was used for a long time as the definition of the meter. I think uh, Napoleon had a... Uh, uh, a, a uh, a rod of gold or no probably platinum a rod of platinum to the length that they said was the one millionth ten millionth part well we know now they were wrong so anyways the ancient egyptians knew the meter better and we'll show why here so we're in receipt of a paper from an amateur mathematician william verhard of spain so his paper analyzes the dimensions of the sarcophagus of pharaoh jedefri the brother of khufu the builder of the great pyramid Jedefri built a pyramid 12 kilometers north of the Giza complex. So you see the Giza complex in the lower part of this picture, and you know, way up above the words there, you can see Ab in Abru Wash, that's where Jedefri built his pyramid. Now here are the measurements of the tombs, the sarcophagi of the, uh, of the three big uh, Giza guys, Khufu, Khafre, and Menkara, and these, uh, these measurements are taken from Flinders Petri. 
But here uh, is a picture of the sarcophagus of uh, Jedefri, you know, sort of the fourth uh, famous fourth dynasty uh, pyramid builder. And, uh, and so here you can see uh, that sarcophagus of Jedefri, and it's interesting, the diagonal of his tomb, his sarcophagus is, is, is equal to exactly one meter. So I probably shouldn't have said earlier that the, the Egyptians did it more accurately, but they obviously calculated the meter here. And it's shown in this coffin of Jedefri. So uh, I had a, a Skype conversation with uh, Willem Berhardt, who was very interested in this, and I asked him some questions about these, uh, these coffins and uh, specifically about Jedefri's measurements. Really one meter, you know? But it's if you find only one, one... Is it in all four coffins or just the one? No, only in this one. Yeah. Because the other four coffins are, are not uh, mathematical shaped as this one. They, they, they are, have also got very... Uh, they, 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 are, they are related because the same values, you can, they, they, they constantly come back. The, 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 the value of the foot of 30.8 centimeters, cent, centimeters and the value of the royal cubit of 52.39 meter, uh, centi centimeters, but uh, the, 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 only the, the coffin of Hordedev is really the, the, the mathematical example for us to, what leads us to the conclusion that they knew the meter. Okay. But for, for Verotifor's work, it's very important to know that the other four tombs or coffins the measures they show, they all come back to the pyramid. You can also see them back in the pyramid. That's very important because because I I think that the relation among these four tombs and the, the pyramid is very important because other people will see then that it wasn't just a tomb for, for a pharaoh. It was really another thing. With, with a met, 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 mathematical shape. Many yeah. people don't yeah. see it. Here, here's, yes. a, here's a thought that I had while I was listening to you. So just tell me what you think about it. And that's this. Um, um, since they, they are, the sarcophagus is showing that it's more than a tomb, more than what? Are they also, since they're showing it's more than a tomb by the mathematical measures that are there, are they sort of saying this shows there's a creator and so you don't need a tomb because you can have eternal life? Well, I think that, uh, I personally think that, uh, of course, yes. It means there's a creator, but um, perhaps other people don't think so. But I think if you, we, if we, we, if the, I think you really that the creator shows us by this monument and the other monuments as the coffins that he would indicate that there is something more than uh, just change, you know, yeah. but. Uh, but I, I really don't know why the Egyptians uh, had to show us that. Do you know that? Why is it the pyramid that shows that Christ, Christ exists? Okay, you want to know something? Uh, so today, or maybe it was yesterday, it's yesterday, I'm reading through with some family members. Uh, we're in different places, but we're reading through the Gospels in 90 days. Mm -hmm. and yesterday we read Matthew 12. And in Matthew 12, Jesus said, when he was chastising the Pharisees, he said, the queen of the south will stand up in the judgment before this generation. So he exalts this, the pagan queen of the south above the Pharisees, who thought they were the religious elite. 
He says, you know, they're closer to God than you are. Well, I believe the Queen of the South was Queen Hatshepsut. So she came to visit Solomon because she had heard how wise he was. And when she got there, she found out that he was more than twice as wise as even anything she had heard. And I'm sure she learned a lot about the Hebrew God. And so she took that back to Egypt with her. And so Jesus was saying when he said, the queen of the south, the queen of Sheba will rise up before you in his own way. He was answering the question you just said about why did the Egyptians show this to us? Why was it the Egyptians? Mm -hmm. I don't know why, but Jesus knew they were doing it too. Yes. Because he said, the queen of Sheba Sheba will rise in the judgment before you will. Well, that's very interesting. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, listen. Uh, I, I've, uh, I've uh, you know, I'm I'm not a good mathematician, so I'm at a stretch to, to listen, you know, to follow your math. But I, I think I understand, you know, the concept and, and at least some of the significance of what you've done. So I want to continue to uh, help promote your work. And... So. Uh, Interesting. Interesting. So I want to ask you to continue to follow this channel. Tell others, subscribe, hit the bell, get notified, and we'll keep coming at you with uh, cutting edge stuff. Thanks for watching.